What's up, YouTube? Karn221 here, and welcome back to another Card of Heroes 2 online replay commentary. This time I'm playing as the Russians. I do notice that I've, a lot of my videos, I'm getting good ones with the Germans and not so many with the Russians, so I'm really working hard to try to get some good ones with the Russians. And here is one of them, actually. So this will be kind of fun. I'm playing with Agent Goat Ninja. I've played quite a few games with him. We usually do 2v2s. I'm pretty sure... At least in 4v4s, it's the Russians that lose most of the time because usually those games last long, a long time, right? So the thing about them lasting a long time is that the Germans get their heavier tanks in the end. But then again, I have a, a video where the uh, I haven't made yet with a bunch of uh, heavy KV1s, and you know the Soviets have some pretty heavy tanks too. So I'm I've been trying a new strategy with the Soviets. I've been making two conscript squads that I'm going to get a Molotov package, then I'm gonna grab some penal troops and shock troops that like a large infantry presence to begin with. And I've been starting to use conscripts a lot more, like you know I didn't use conscripts a ton in the very beginning. Well, I used them in the beginning for a while. And then I just got like, okay, I'll make one conscript, then go right to the penal troops. Conscripts can be if you use them correctly, they can be totally worth, you know, the twenty man power to um the 20 manpower to re, re, uh, reinforce one of these units here. I also want to introduce a, uh, a character here. I had this idea for a long time. So this guy right here with his rifle out. It's Comrade Chanko. Now Comrade Chanko grew up on a farm and told the, the Nazis raided and burned down his farm. So he was conscripted into the Soviet army there. And Comrade Chanko will appear in a couple of my videos. Moving on, but that's Comrade Chanko right there. He's one of the conscripts, and got an interesting storyline that will happen with Comrade Chanko over a couple of my videos. So I've had the idea for a long time to bring in a a character for the Soviets. Who knows? We might even have a character for the Germans at some point. The Wehrmacht. Anyway, so I have two conscript squads here. I also have the Molotov package. Now keep in mind, we just played these guys in a previous game. We just played these guys in a previous game, and these guys like heavy infantry begin like to begin with. Because he's got two grenadiers. This guy has two grenadiers also, so I guess it's not too heavy start, but I'm gonna be teaching you in this video how to deal with machine and gewehr 900 Fear and Swasik. Swine and Fear Sick, 1942, yeah, that's right. Anyway, when I see the grenadiers, I'm like, okay, you guys are combat engineers. Now they can be pretty good with the upgrade. <laughs> but as you can see them saying, get the F out of here right now. Ah, there you go. One thing I don't like about Moscow outskirts is it just stretches your lines so far. Obviously you can't see me moving my hands. Like It's kind of funny when you do a commentary. Right? When you're on TV or something, you can see that movement. So I'm going to immediately uh, capture this point and push up to take on his fuel. They're taking away ammunitions. It's very important for the Soviets early on with the Molotov package to get your money's worth out of it. And right now, I'm kind of saving some of my... Ah, oh, watch out. So see, with this, I chose the Soviet shock army, so I get the shock troops. One of my favorite doctrines lately. Look at the Molotov. It's going to throw them out of their own cover here, right? So I'm forcing them to retreat. So that was eh, 15 munitions, right? But it's, it's very good, especially for less mobile units, like a machine gun. And the biggest thing Soviets have in the early game against the ma machine guns of the Germans is you have to use your numbers, you have to outflank, never charge a machine gun with all your troops one way, because they'll just get pinned, they'll, they'll just get pinned, you off to retreat. As you can see, we've kind of conceded the middle in favor of a strong left and right flank. Unfortunately, that's where all the munitions are, so we're going to need to get some of those. Let's go to uh, Goat here and see what he chose. He has the shock troops. The Propaganda fear artillery, the howitzer, the KV-8, and the precision bombing. Oh yeah, and here, my guys are like glitching a little bit. They were jumping. I was trying to throw a, a Molotov on these guys. Look, it's like point blank. So I just caught one of their guys on fire. Now they're in heavy cover, and I'm like, oh gosh, totally surrounded here. Got to pull the hell back. So I'm jumping over the fence going, uh-oh. I was like... I don't know what I was doing there, but these guys are going to get wiped out. Luckily, Kamrachenko's squad is up here. Kamrachenko maybe lost a couple of his brothers. Once again, he is right there. 
So I got these guys behind a wall, you know, heavy cover. I'm just trying to give them something to shoot at, right? I got, I now have my penal troops and my shock troops. And I gotta say, if you use shock troops correctly, they could be overpowered. If you get two or three of these units with your smoke grenade to blind the MG, you can get close enough usually to throw those guys. And my comrade Jacob's now holding down a house. Notice how he turned, you know, he's, he turned his machine gun this way, and guess what? I got I got troops coming. I'm gonna hop these guys over the fence here in a sec. Once again, I like penal troops a lot because they're they're pretty elite. But with the combination of the shock troops, along with the penal troops, we, we should be able to overcome that. Keep in mind, he is in negative cover right now. <laughs> it looked like he just picked up a. Um, I think he picked up some ammo just from nowhere. So I'm taking this with my combat engineers. And you know, the, the MG42 is just out of range, which is good for me. But the MG42 has a huge arc, just keep that in mind. So these Strafniki are moving in. And I'm going to satchel this guy, but I, I hold back for my satchel, and I'll just chase this guy all the way down the street, right? These guys fire pretty fast and pretty accurately on the movies. You can see the health of the MG42 is just getting destroyed here. And he's, I'm like, buddy, you better, you better just back off, you're going to lose your MG, which he does. So this kind of combination of the multiple infantry units, have these guys back in reserve. I gotta say, they use the uh, <laughs> and Chanko is still firing, bravely defending his motherland. Anyway, so basically, these guys are gonna get the attention of the MG42. I'm gonna activate these guys. So, unfortunately. Those guys just got destroyed by Hitler's buttsaw there. Sorry, capture that. I have a lot of, I have a decent amount of manpower, and I might get a second. Oh no, I'm getting a scout car to help deal with these even more. So once again, turn his, got his MG's attention with the combat engineers and moving in with the shock troops. And they're not very mobile, and that grenade is pretty overpowered. Uh, I mean, it's an anti-personnel grenade, right? It's going to do a lot of damage. It's also 30 munitions, so twice as much as the Molotov. So keep in mind when you're attacking an MG, be sure to be able to flank it like I did here and here. So what I'm doing with Comrade Chango Squad is I'm getting some more reinforcements, and so you can pick up the MG42. I'm not gonna let them take this MG42. That's my mine now, pretty much. I do have a scout car here. I can't remember why I was really using. I think I was trying to have a little bit of fun. You know, shoot at some um, support units, maybe put my penal troops in there, so flamethrower. I can see a lot of infantry fighting over here, but the conscripts work pretty well with the shock troops. Now you can see he's reinforcing his men. He's built a medic bunker to help heal up all his men. Is that going to land right on these guys? Oh, that was a brutal shot. Killed three of them immediately. Keep in mind, you don't want to stand on the, on the road there. Just in the middle with no cover. And keep in mind, this is what you want to be doing with your conscripts. You want to be using their numbers, right? And, look, he's trying to send these guys in to take his ma machine gun back. There is no way in hell I'm going to let him do that. And he's going to try to pull back. And somehow his guys managed to do that. But we got the important ones. Just in time, we were able to grab that uh, machine gun 42. It's important that I, we're both holding the fuel right now because we're running 36 fuel a minute instead of these guys are only getting 13. As you can see, I've already built the mechanized armor company. So I can get an early SU. I'm afraid of like a half track or something with flamethrower, like what he's dealing with. It's a good idea. He's still an MG42 also. It's a good idea to see how he's attacked from different directions. He's got them suppressed and he's going to go up to that with a... I believe he has anti-tank grenades. If you're making a lot of conscripts, like three to five, it's a good idea to do that. These guys are going to run out of steam, though, and be exhausted. Will he get it? Uh, he's on the road, and he's backing up. He's also... At that point, he was about to come under the MG42 there. So, pulling back Comrade Chenko squad. They're going to get wiped out. Anyway, I'm starting to take the center back over. We're kind of shifting, right? He's kind of holding the right side. I'm holding that. Meanwhile, we have a, a renewed offensive coming in right here. I even have some of my snipers. I, I do not have the micro to use snipers. I do not have the micro in this game to use snipers effectively with how many other things. I was like, oh, no, we'll, we'll be fine. I can just circle around that MG42. But guess what? Even if they destroy us, this is a complete diversion with the scout car. You know, 20 feet or whatever. 
It doesn't matter. He turned his MG42 away from my assault. So I'm going to now throw a grenade right on that MG42 and try to wipe it out. Snipers are shooting. Wiped out the MG42 practically. Desperately trying to kill that. And might as well wipe out the Grenadier Squad if I can. And somehow my men cannot wipe out when there's only one guy left. Meanwhile, Blizzard's starting to set in. Me and my guys behind the rock here. So right now... I'm reinforcing my men. I'm really, actually, I'm microing up here because I have a decent amount of men. I got my snipers too. I usually like to hold fire with your snipers and manually use them, but that takes a lot of um, stuff. What I should really do right now, what's crack? What I should really do is bring these guys around and flank. But I'm okay if they take the field temporarily back. I just can't concede this whole side. And it's a blizzard. Keep that in mind. What do you need? It's, it's very important. If you're a Soviet player and you can steal an MG42, absolutely. Because the maxims aren't that good. Like, So the maxims are... The, it, let me let me do a contrast between the MG42. By the way, I'm sniping them right here. Unfortunately, I just clicked an attack order and then on the road... And somehow in an MG42's range, it's suppressed. So, let me just tell you the difference between an MG42 and a Maxim. MG42, wider arc of fire, as we can see here. I believe it shoots faster. It seems more deadly to me, right? So, wider arc of fire, slower to set up. A Maxim, more mobile, smaller arc, a little bit, I think they're about the same range. So, you have more men with an. Uh, a maxim. You have a smaller arc. You can see that kind of arc there is huge for the MG42. But you're more mobile. So the MG42, heavier machine gun, less guys, but wider arc. So those are the two major differences there. So I'd definitely take an MG42 any day over a maxim because of that wider arc. It really helps protect you from being flanked there. These guys are almost freezing to death. I'm at least. I'm not too worried about my flank here. And then look, they have like a big flanking force coming up. Once again, multiple directions. And. I don't have an MG4 tier. So, here's what I'm going to do I'm going to run until I can throw a smoke grenade. At this point, I'm in range. I think I'm trying to. I'm getting an MG42. I'm sorry, I'm getting a SU85 here. So, I should. I'm going to throw a smoke here, as you can watch this. Throwing a smoke. Flanking around this side to get rid of the MG42. And I have my conscripts in here, Comrade Chanko's squad. And we force that MG back with the smoke. That smoke is invaluable for these shock troops. It's extremely valuable. So we're pushing these guys back. And I got the SU-85 out. It's about 12 minutes, they're a little behind. But they're going so heavy tier 1 and tier 2 for the, you know. They have the Electa and Mechanized Company. And he's even got that vetted up, which is impressive. They've taken a ton of damage, that's for sure. So here is where... I don't think this assault... Ah, oh, yes, he didn't even set... Now he's setting up his MG42. I'm going to throw a smoke, hopefully. Yep. I not only have the grenade up, he's now turned over there. I'm throwing a Molotov on him. I'm gonna force this guy to retreat. It's like he wants to play chicken. I got, you know, I got a def decent amount of men here, and so do you, but do you wanna risk that? So then I stole his pack. Now, it wasn't my cheapest troops. I mean, penal troops. I always say you use the conscripts to steal stuff like that. But I like having a pack and an MG. I love stealing German technology. So this is a veteran Z2. It's killed 19 guys. Oh, and by the way, totally, if you're the Soviets, be sneaky, be horrible, put demo charges down. They can be invaluable. Like, they can they can literally, like, decimate. Um, they can wipe out whatever better the unit is if they stand near it. I do have a cost, so they are 90 munitions. So keep that in mind. I have my SU up here. If they didn't have a pack, I'd go try to help them out there. You can see that pack is doing some work. The German packs have the target weak ability, so those are, um, these can, like, shock a crew, pretty much. 
He's throwing so many anti-tank grenades at that, and he's really trying to trying to stop him. And it's so close to dying, and it just doesn't die. And then the tank moved out, but he's probably gonna lose his tank. I'm not sure. Well, the T-34 is what 85 fuel, 280 manpower, and that was what's a half track anyway? I can't remember what the exact. It's like 120 and 30. Yeah, that's right. So keep in mind, I've completely secured my side, pretty much. What do you need? My ears are frozen. Did you want something? He's got that sneaky demo charge. Uh, but Billy, I'll show you another game with these guys earlier. And demo charges will be quite fun. Uh -huh. So after we had played our last game, we went right to this game, and it was the same two guys. So we kind of knew what the other was doing. We knew these guys started very heavy tier one. At 14 minutes in the game, oh, he skipped right to heavy Panzer Corps. Now. You gotta realize how feasible that is, right? You're getting... I guess they are getting 20 fuel. They're getting just as much as us, I guess. The one thing me and, uh... Or I guess you would call it... Agent, um, Ninja Goat. Goat... Wait a second. Yeah, yeah Agent Ninja Goat. <laughs> I just called him Goat. The only thing we didn't do in this battle was actually... Look, he's standing away from that. The one thing we didn't do in this battle was build those fuel caches. Now, it's very dangerous if you like if you're close to the demo charge. I believe they can blow it up if they throw a grenade on it. But I don't think any units can um we turn on the fog of war. Yeah, I don't think any units can see that. So you see a little assault here. I really want to see that demo charge go on. Now would be if it got a little closer. Meanwhile, I have a little bit of resistance on my side. So this guy was complaining here in a second. He was talking about 360 manpower for these guys against 90 um now look he's trying to lure him out right in case he clicked an attack order see he's just trying to lure them a little bit closer and he threw that nice so an mg42 came up comrade chanko still alive somehow fighting bravely his squad is only um hasn't killed a ton of men yet so by holding the munitions, we are not only like denying these guys, <laughs> we're only denying them any kind of munitions for any kind of bombing or any kind of doctrine. What doctrine do they have actually? No doctrine, that's why you would... Neither of these guys chose a doctrine. Okay good, he chose a doctrine. I guess we're denying the spotting scopes in the bombing run later, but they, they haven't used like any of I guess they're using it for rifle grenades and stuff. These flame half tracks are the bane of uh, Goat's existence right there. And then we have another MG42 coming down the road. You're in enemy territory. you got to realize that, right? So I'm just going to... His MG isn't set up. I'm like trying to get it there as quickly as I can, just in range. And I get suppressed by another MG. And at this point, I'm talking to Goat. One, I throw a smoke, but we're pinned, which really sucks. I'm like... He's like, you have troops right there. I'm like, whoops. So... Bring my troops around. Keep in mind with the SU 85s. Those are pure, pretty much anti tanks. What are those? Oh, those guys, yes. I had guys over here that came to flank from around there. So just keep in mind that even with the satchel charge, right? So you can pin this unit, right? But I have two other units come on your flanks. So the greatest way to get rid of the MG 42s and stuff is to just flank around. Now, when they have them covering each other and stuff, then that's when you run into trouble. But the smoke grenades for the, the shock troops are very good. You can see they have a mighty force here. Still isn't blown up. But also, by the way, when he's that close to that satchel charge and you don't blow it sometimes, it's like better to wait for oh, those guys just got wiped out. It's better to sometimes wait for the bigger fish. But I'd be very careful about his anti-tank gun. Anyway, this game's going pretty well for me, so I'm gonna actually I think we can. Yeah, we can see how many kills and stuff. I've only lost. 28 men. <laughs> I'm getting ready to do an assault on the left flank here and try to start hitting their base because I haven't seen any kind of tank out. And I'm afraid. I was afraid they were doing like. I saw some veterans on some of their troops and stuff, so I was afraid they were doing uh, the elite troop doctrine and waiting for a tiger ace. And now would be a perfect time. There you go. Four shock trooper, but he did wipe out 360 manpower and then it wiped out the. Pioneer squad, so that is when that guy started raging.
No, I have my snipers like right here. Who the fuck I want? Like they can't even see them. And I'll tell you know my SU-85s. I'll totally just start shooting at these infantry. He uses out the veteran Z2 and stuff on his machine guns. I mean, I thought I'd wiped out a decent amount of them. So when I saw that, I was thinking like maybe elite troop doctrine. Anyway, nice thing is that he has the medic, so I can always send over my guys when they're reinforcing that way. Kamarachenko squad has killed four men and lost quite a lot more than that. And that is when they surrendered. Um, this guy was really complaining. I think it was Jiga was really complaining about the uh, the demo charges. Now, if we put them on every point, I could see I could see like how you'd be really upset because we have the munitions to do it. Let's be honest. But if we put it on all the points, we just kept blowing them up. I'm not sure there's a perfect way to carry that. I'm not even sure that pioneers can. I'm not sure if pioneers can get the hazard removal kits to, uh, or whatever the Germans' version of that is to. Um, can actually detect those so i have to do a little bit of research with that and get back to you guys so hope you guys enjoyed this this russian uh coming to heroes 2 keep in mind always outflank mg42s especially with the heavy tier one start you can use your comps effectively with the anti-tank thing as you saw goat doing with the anti-tank grenade and also with the molotovs as you saw me throwing them on mgs also the shock troops with their smoke their grenades are very effective against this, and also satchel charges. Satchel charges for the penal troops are excellent against MGs in buildings or just any enemies in buildings. Let's keep that in mind. It's Colin G21 signing off. Hope you enjoyed.